part of that. Okay. Tell mom that. Um, it is important. We started that, we arrived it, you know, five years ago. Just give, if everybody give a look. We're not like Republicans where they have two or three big donors like the Koch brothers to come here. We, um, we're down here with, with grassroots and Republicans. And we all give what we can. Five dollars, ten dollars. I did fifty dollars. Just, uh, he keeps the lights on. And it helps us do the programs and support the staff. Uh, that we have. So thank you so much for, for all of that. And one other announcement, the Federation, uh, Georgia Federation of Teachers is having the movie premiere. They're going to show it around the state. It's called Backpack Full of Cash about some of the school choice movement. And there are flyers around that will be in on that as well. Okay, to get on to uh, I want to thank Rebecca for giving a recap. Uh, but it is about looking forward. And what we've talked about, we need to take some time to do some uh, looking at this last election and, and, and what happened and where we can go. But, you know, why we did so good, yes, we did a lot of work. We had great candidates up and down the chain. And I want to take a chance. Let's thank you. Let's thank you. Yeah. 
about this next generation of leaders. You know, as I said when I first came on, the people who have come up to Young Dems, they're not the future of the party, they are the party. Yeah. And I'll be around to help out, I'm glad to, but look at where we are. Look at where we are. The whole nation is looking at you because of the work you've done. We're, and they keep saying, yeah, well, where's the next battleground state? Well, Georgia's not the next battleground state. You've heard the state of Alabama. We are the battleground state. And had, and had Brian Kemp not purged 50,000 additional voters off the left, Georgia would be blue today and say shame would be done. And we'd be talking about Medicaid expansion. And we'd be talking about taking away money from school choice plans and putting in public education. Yeah. And we'd be talking about how the state can partner to expand Martin to public transportation. Yeah. And we'd be talking about clean air and water. Yeah. We'd be talking about equal access to justice yeah. and equal access to the ballot. Yeah. All right, that's the fight that we're fighting. And we still got to fight a little harder. You know, I think those 17,000 votes for a short going to run off would have made all the difference because we'd have won in that run off. Yeah. And it's not because South Georgia is so strong. It's not. We're losing population in my state. We've got to get our people registered and out to vote. Yeah. And we've got to have inspirational candidates just like we had this year to get them there. Y'all, I could not be more excited about who we are. And I am sorry we didn't get there, but we did pick up those 14 seats in the General Assembly. Lucy made vast part of the wave across the country. And everybody in the country, you hear it on the news, what are they talking about? They talking about Georgia. Yep. Every presidential, every presidential contestant on both sides, but particularly ours, are coming to Georgia. We're in a good spot. But we got to continue the work and take it to the next step. 
I'll say it one more time because there will be a reason to say that. I do feel a little bit like Moses. We're out of Egypt. We've come out of the wilderness. But we haven't made it to the promised land. Now we are standing on the banks of the Jordan River. And we're looking across. And why is this so important? Because of what the promise is in the promised land. Come on. And that promise is Medicaid expansion for however many hundreds, tens of thousands more Georgians. Yeah. And in that promised land is equal access to justice. Yeah. And in that promised land is equal access to the ballot yeah. and clean air and water and mass transit yeah. and truly funding public and supporting public education. Yeah. You say it? Y'all were right here. Let's get across the world. Let's get to that promised land because with Democrats in charge, there is so much promise in the promised land. We know what it would do for Georgians who are struggling at home for jobs. We hear about the recovery. My area of the state is still losing population. My area of the state is still losing hospitals and health care clinics because they can't afford them. There's a lot of people in Georgia who are suffering. And they will only have the same opportunity if Democrats are in charge. There's a reason why we are who we are. And at least we're at a point now where we're not, we can talk about it, about why we are who we are. And why, our, why being a Democrat and being led by Democrats is better for Georgia. And better for Georgia. So y'all, we have a lot of work still to do. We've got to the banks of that shore, but we've got to get across. And I'm excited to be, we'll be around to support it. We've got it to a good spot, but we know that Georgia can be in a better place. And it's going to take us, the Democratic Party of Georgia, to get us there. So thank you for your work. Thank you for support. It's been a great honor to be your chairman. I look forward to working with you in a lot of other areas. There's still a lot of work to be done, and we'll talk about that to the day. But uh, I could not be prouder to have been your chairman, and thank you for the support you've given me and the amazing staff that we've had here at the party. But Chris, let me have all the staff of the Democratic Party stand up and raise your hand. Sarah Gazal, Sarah, where are you? We, I think she's going to be counting votes here. But there's still some folks outside. Okay, they're getting folks in. Y'all, you saw what we did in voter protection. Our office did what the Secretary of State's office should have been doing. Yes. Yes. There are days we got a thousand calls a day when people not knowing where to go vote, how they're registered. We got calls from Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> Because they did not trust the Secretary of State. This governor, you've heard me talk about it, is a national governor. If he couldn't have cheated while he was in charge, he wouldn't have gone. Let's remember that as we go forward. It was wrong. It's up to us to say it was wrong. We had, as Rebecca said, we had to take the court over and over, and we won every time because we were right. <laughs> 159 counties and 159 ways to interpret absentee ballots. <laughs> Sarah Miko is going to talk today with us in between the elections about what happened in her race. I had a friend of mine say what happened in that race and the drop off and going back up is statistically impossible to have happened. But it did because of these voting machines we had. And what is, you know, everybody, I've heard the governor, you've heard him, uh, we're going to all come together at the same time 
He just hired the guy that represents the voting machine company who represented who, who uh, recommended buying more of those machines. When Georgians want paper ballots, they can be verified. And uh, thank you, the people who are on the uh, commission and how they voted, Michael Jawanski, thank you for what the recommendations you have made on that. But y'all, we're still in a fight for access, for justice, at the voting booth. Georgia is seeing, Brian Kemp's the poster child for the country on voter suppression. Stacey Abrams calls him the architect of voter suppression, and he is. And at the very end, when things got tight, what did he do? He told the big lie. He claimed the Democratic Party hacked the Secretary of State. <laughs> Folks, I tell you, that did not happen. There was no investigation. <coughs> they lied. It was wrong. And the only way we're going to have them accountable is to stay on. Call them out. You can't say it's okay. Yes, under the system we've got, they want odd. We've got to accept that, but we don't have to agree to it. We've got to make things sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. We all, the point is, it's been a great ride. We're in a good spot, but there's a lot of work to do. So, what I'm excited about is this full room today. Wow. And you know, there were times, we had, we had bylaw changes this past summer, and we didn't have a, we had a quorum to meet, we didn't have a quorum to pass bylaws. But we now have challenges in every race because people want to be involved again. People believe in the Democratic Party again. We're going to leave this state to a better place. Yes. Join me to welcome the person that helped us get to this spot, Stacey Abrams. We win. Hey. We just want to make there, sure there is that next Sunday. Yeah. Right? Let's thank her one more time for leaving. Yeah. Senator! 
Dr. William Powell. to serve as your chair, it will be an even greater honor to be your past chair. <laughs> but I'll be around. I'm going to be like Calvin Smiley. We need to thank the Chairman of America of the Democratic Party, Calvin Smiley. Yeah. You know, if you take you off with people who serve, then you never heard from them again. Calvin's been there. David Worley's been there for a long time. He's still here, still back. Still contributes and still give because you believe. Thank you, because I've called on the past years a lot in the past five years. I want to thank you for always being there, your good advice and your good heart. So y'all, let me thank starting one last time, join the officers of the staff in the past years of the DPG. Please let's thank them. Get to work. All right, we're going to do this.